Well, let's move on to something a little bit different, though similar to what we've been doing right through 2020. 2020 has been a terrific year. I think you all agree. This is the year that we've really confronted the Quran. We've really uh, confronted the, the, the whole problem of preservation, the holes in the narrative, the the, the phrase that is now all over the internet, uh, Yasser Qadi have, making that infamous interview back on June 8th of this year. Uh, the meltdown that he had on Thanksgiving against myself, David Wood, and Dan Brubaker, which has also gone all over the internet, our responses to that. But in the background, we've been also confronting Muhammad himself, and we've been confronting specifically whether he existed or not. And I brought Robert Spencer, uh, the author of, of this book here, did Muhammad exist? And we brought him on board twice in July this last summer uh, to talk about whether or not Muhammad had existed or not. And, the, and in that series of interviews that I had with Robert Spencer, we kept on looking back and saying, hold on, what's the problem here? Why can't we f find Muhammad back here in the 7th century? Since that time, uh, Robert Spencer beca uh, has now redone his book, and he's about to come out with a, a completely new edition, 25% more information that's going to be added to this book in the, the next edition that's coming out. And I had that debate with David Wood on, that very, on this very subject a number of weeks ago there in California, where I suggested that the Islamic Muhammad, the Muhammad of the 9th and 10th century that he loves and, well, doesn't love, but he certainly loves to use and to bespoil the character of that man, as whether or not he's relevant for today, I was, I was saying that that must really be left in the 9th and 10th century, that we really need to look at the Muhammad of the 7th century. Now, part of that whole argument is this difficulty that we're fine with, for, with five things, not just Muhammad. We can't find Muhammad anywhere in, in the 7th century. That's true. That's clear. And we looked at the Astanami letters. We looked also at the Constitution of Medina. We looked at the Doctrine of Iyakobi. These are supposed references to Muhammad, and I was able to debunk every one of them. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, and that was also done this year. We have yet to look at whether or not we can find any people called Muslims or a religion called Islam. The Quran is something that we're going to continue to look at concerning whether or not there is any book called the Quran in the 7th century. And I'm yet to even get into that. I have yet to move into that area because we're holding off until we really <laughs> whittle down all the difficulties with the Kirat. But the last thing, the fifth thing that we really want to engage is Mecca itself. Mecca itself. Why Mecca? Well, because Mecca is such an important city, isn't it? Absolutely important if you're a Muslim absolutely important if you believe the, in the Quran, in this book here. The little blue book that I always keep ready because it's getting smaller and smaller and with more and more holes that are we're now piercing into it. And one of the holes in this book is chapter 48, verse 24, where, the, where we can find the only reference to Mecca anywhere in the Quran, and that is in chapter 48, verse 24. That's a huge problem. If it's such an important city for Islam, why is it the only mentioned once? What do I mean by importance? Well, stop and think. In chapter 7, verse 24 of the Quran, it says that Adam and Eve were thrown down to earth. Now, the Quran doesn't say where they were thrown down to, just down to earth, out of heaven or out of the Garden of Eden, which is up in space. According to the traditions, again, 9th and 10th century, the reference there says that Eve was thrown down to Mecca, Adam was thrown down to Sherman or somewhere in Kerala in South India, and then he strode across, boom, 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 all the way back up to Mecca. How do you do that? Because that's thousands of miles away. Nonetheless, that's what the traditions tell us. So Mecca, if that is true, historically, then Mecca would be the oldest city of, of, of mankind. It was the first city of mankind, because that's where Adam and Eve lived. Put that, number one. Number two, in chapter 21, verse 51 to 71, Abraham so now in 1900 BC, in 1900 BC, we have him there in Mecca. Supposedly, it doesn't say Mecca in chapter 21. It just says it's where that the 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 it is where the Kaaba is, and he goes into the Kaaba and he destroys all the idols there, and he's arrested the next day by the people, and they throw him into a fiery pit. Whether you like that story or not, that's an odd story because we don't know of uh, certainly Abraham being thrown into any pit. We do not know of Abraham living down 
in Mecca, we know he lived way up in Hebron, and we know that that's where he died, and that's where he lived, and that's a thousand miles further north. Nonetheless, that's what chapter 21 says. So for Muslims, Mecca is hugely important because it's the very first settlement of all mankind. It's where Abraham lived in 1900 BC. According to all the Islamic traditions, it is the place where Muhammad was born. That's what the Siddha talks about, uh, Ibn Hisham Siddha in 833 AD. Uh, that's also what Al-Buhari refers to. All the traditions refer to Muhammad living there in Mecca born there in Mecca, living there until 622 AD, when he then moved from Mecca up to Medina, uh, and 622, and that would be the Hijrah, the Hijrah, the Exodus. So the Islamic traditions are very much in, uh, uh, dependent on Mecca being historical, on Mecca existing. But here's the difficulty. We just can't find it anywhere. It just doesn't exist. It's not on any inscription. It's not on any rock inscription. It's not on any coins. It's not on anything written. Uh, it, there are no objects towards it. Remember all of Dan Gibson's material, all of his research on the Qiblas of the mosque. Every one of the mosques are facing north, not facing Mecca. Not facing Mecca. Not one mosque is facing Mecca until 727. Muhammad died in 632. Supposedly Mecca was the center of trade, north, south, east, and west. We can't find any trading documents, no Qiblas of any mosque facing Mecca, no trading documents, not one set of trading documents that goes to Mecca at all. In fact, the trade that Dr. Patricia Corona found that went up the western coast of Arabia, it went from Taif straight up to Yathrib, Tabuk, Khaybar, and up to Gaza in the north. No reference anywhere of any of these trading documents that she could find going to Mecca. She, we did a whole book on this in 1987, Meccan Trade and the Rise of Islam. Look at her book, 15 chapters, looking at 15 different spices and couldn't find any reference to this city, Mecca. And yet this is supposed to be the oldest city in history. The oldest city in history. The most famous city in history, because that's where the that's where the Kaaba has always existed. So we're told. That's where Abraham and Ishmael rebuilt the Kaaba. So we're told. That's what their traditions tell us. So why is it no one's heard of this city? Why is it it's not in any inscription? Dr. Patricia Corona found that the first reference to Mecca is from the continued Byzantia, Arabica. That was a document written in 741. But she didn't read the entire she didn't read the entire inscription because that inscription places Mecca, the city of Mecca, or the city called Mecca, just south of Edessa between Edessa and Aharon. That's way up in southern Turkey. <laughs> way too far north. So can you see the problem here for Muslims? They've got to find Mecca. They've got to find this city. If it's the the earliest city in existence. It's where Abraham was. It's where Muhammad lived. It's where he was born. It's where he grew up. It's where he started receiving the revelations from 610 to 622, the first 12 years. It's where he moved from in 622 to go back, to go up to Medina. It's where he came back in 630 to defeat the, and destroy, I'm not destroy, but to take over Mecca in 630. And then he died two years later. So it has to be there. Otherwise, everything falls to pieces. Not only Muhammad falls to pieces, all the traditions fall to pieces. Everything we know about the history of Islam falls to pieces. So Mecca is a real problem. So, like with Mecca, as we did with Muhammad, like with Mecca, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to ask, so where is any reference to Mecca in the 7th century? 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, any century. When is there any reference to Mecca prior to the 8th century? That's my question today. Prior to the 8th century, I don't want to hear about 741 because that inscription is too far north. Anything prior to the 8th century, if you can, Muslims, if you can help me here, show me a reference to Mecca. Show me any reference. And you are. And you are. And that's what we're going to start off with. Because there are references to Mecca. Makaraba, is that the reference to Mecca? Diodorus, uh, does he talk about it? Agah. Agatharchides. Let me get his name right. Agatharchides. Agatharchides. Does he talk about Mecca or Aristotle or Diodorus, as I mentioned earlier? What about Strabo and Photius? Are they talking about Mecca? So there are some references. So what I'm going to do now is take every one of those references to Mecca and I'm going to debunk them. 
like I debunked Muhammad. We're going to debunk Mecca. We have to do this. Because as historians, we've got to ask. We've got to put it out there. We've got to have you refer back to us. You've, we've got to hear your comments. And then we've got to look at every one of your suppositions. And these are nothing more than theoretical suppositions of where you think Mecca could have been referred to or described. So I'm going to be doing that in this series, okay? We're going to look at every one of yours. And I'm going to be looking at what a lot of Ian D. Morris has been saying because he's probably done the best work at debunking these theories. And he's done so using historical criticism. Going back to the century, this supposedly this city existed. Going back to the 7th century, supposedly where this man, Muhammad, supposedly lived and moved from. And supposedly where half of this Quran, or the second half of this Quran, was revealed. So let's do that. Come with me. Let's go and see about these theories concerning Mecca. And let's see if really you, as Muslims, can support any of them. I suggest you cannot. And everyone you throw my way, I will put it to the acid test. I will put it to the historical test, not the traditional test. I don't care. Don't just sit there and quote traditions to me. I want nothing from the 9th or the 10th or the 11th century. Please don't waste my time. Give me something from the 7th century or earlier. Okay? Let's see where we go. God bless you. This is going to be fun. This is Jay then. Over and out.